welcome to the rant. I'm John Shannon. I wanted uh, to talk today a little bit about uh, something that came up on my uh, on my MySpace, excuse me, MySpace, right? My uh, YouTube page on the comments about discrimination and racism in uh, in my industry, the taxi cab industry. Uh, you know, I, I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't think that that, that type of thing still existed in the uh, taxi cab industry in the United States. Um, I know that it's probably a lot more prevalent in bigger cities as opposed to um as opposed to the smaller communities like where I'm at right now in uh in uh, little rock um, I did see it quite a bit in uh in las vegas i i will uh, uh I will admit to that but something that have it has to be realized here that this this goes a little bit deeper than just simple black on white prejudice or I sh- I should say white on black prejudice actually um and and I'm not going to try to make excuses for for my industry because because discrimination in any account is wrong and and uh, I'll be the uh the first one to first one to admit that uh and uh i think though that when it comes to the taxi cab industry that, that there are some there are some factors that go into uh that go into uh, the uh the situation there um now I'd heard I didn't hear Barack Obama say this specifically, but I, I, I read that he I guess had had a problem uh hailing a cab in New York City and apparently Danny Glover a while back said he couldn't get a cab. I think it was in New York. Now I can only speak for myself in this instance, but if Danny Glover or Barack Obama were flagging me down, I think I'd probably recognize them and wouldn't have an issue. Not not only that, both of those individuals are pretty clean-cut individuals and uh, don't really look like, uh, they don't look like hood rats or gangbangers or anything to that extent. So, in my estimation, there there is nobody, or there's no excuse whatsoever to 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 live to have left these folks sitting on the curb while they're waving down a cab. Um, now, there are two very huge stigmas, however, in this industry when it comes to, especially younger black males. Um, one of them is, um, it it hasn't happened in a while, but it used to happen quite frequently, um, to me, especially out in Vegas. And I'd pick up a a young black guy and he would be driving through, uh, a particular neighborhood. Next thing you know, he's flashing gang signs at somebody. Now, the last thing I want to be quite honest with you is to all of a sudden have somebody start shooting at the cab because this fool is uh is provocating something. Um so that said, that was one of the that was one of my big fears there for a while in picking up a younger black guy. Um the other stigma and this doesn't affect me as far as whether or not I pick up somebody or not, but one of the one of the stigmas that is attached to to uh, black people in general, uh, and like it or not, right or wrong, there 
there is some there is some basis to this is that the, the black folks aren't the greatest tippers and the cab drivers are out there or quite frankly are out there working for tips um I, I know this is a matter of fact in Little Rock is, is, is very much a case. I mean, uh, I would have to say that 75% of my clientele here in Little Rock are black people, and I have to carry a uh, peanut can full of coin to make sure I have change. I have never had that problem in any other place I've, I've driven cab. Now, I don't treat these folks any differently. I treat them very, very, very friendly, very professionally. Um, I, I and I, I have no explanation to, to to why this may be the case. Why they, uh, why may they they may not tip as well as as other folks do. Um, I have no explanation to that, but I, it is a stigma uh, in this industry when it comes to black people. But um, the other thing is, and and I and I don't have an answer. I don't have a, a, a reason for this either. But it seems like like uh, American black folks, there's something that just they do not get along real well with uh, Somalians, uh, uh, Nigerians, um, folks that are from. Uh, that have come up here or are first generation, but their bloodline is is more in the uh, in Africa or other uh, other um, areas uh, uh, other uh, areas that are prominently uh, uh, Muslim or uh, um, how do I say this? non tradition they, they they really have a mesh with non uh, 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 an issue i guess with non uh, non american uh black individuals and we uh and also for that matter uh, those of arab descent too um there is just something that just it's like oil and vinegar um and you have to remember in New York City, um, and also your more larger cities across the uh, country, this is definitely uh, definitely a bigger issue because, quite frankly, there are a lot more of these type of individuals. <coughs> pardon me, that are driving cab. Don't have that much here in Little Rock, but uh, I've just seen it very big in Vegas, uh, very big in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, um, and also in Orlando, and I've also in other cities that I've visited. This may be one of the reasons, not an excuse, but one of the reasons why why uh, uh, black uh, black Americans are having. Uh, a difficult time getting cabs in cities like New York City and what have you because it's just of that that tension that lies beneath the two cultures. Um, I unfortunately I'm running out of time here, so I'm not going to be able to uh, to expand on this a whole lot more. Always open the discussion by uh, by sending me an email, me at the redneckcabby dot com, or going to the redneckcabby.com and dropping a uh, a comment uh, there in the Mebo box. Uh, I would sure love to discuss this further. Uh, until then, and until the next time, this is John Shannon, the Redneck Cabby. Adios.